my best friend Didn't care about the rules, good on the weekends I'll be in fools, drift in the deep space Watch collection review time and today we're going to talk about Michael's watch collection. Let's go! So let's discuss about Michael's first watch in his collection. Which one should we pick? I would say let's pick the the Davosa. Davosa GMT, it's actually an homage to the Batman GMT from Rolex, but with its own design clues. It's not a one-to-one -one copy, it's an homage. Yes, it does have, of course, the attributes of the Batman GMT included. Anyways, he's going to purchase, he's going like, he would like to purchase a GMT um, from Rolex, but as we all know, it's pretty hard to find. And I think as a substitute, right now at the moment. It does a pretty good job. You do have the ceramic bezel in two colors in blue and black. Very readable dial. The build quality of the Davos is, is really great. So um, I would say for starting the collection and get into it, a pretty good start and a pretty beautiful watch. His second watch in this collection is actually a Seiko. A Seiko chronograph two-tone chronograph, I should say, with a steel gold bracelet, gold bezel, champagne colored dial, and I'm a two-tone fan, to be honest. I do like, do really like this 80s or 70s charm, the vintage look, and um, having a vintage Shaco in the collection, it's, it's not a must, but it's something I do really like, um, especially in this form. Um, I do have myself the GMT Master in two-tone, never would like to miss it, I'm a child of the air here, so the Seiko definitely is a stunner, adds very nice to the other pieces, and if you do count out his um, Casio chronograph, it's the only chronograph in his collection, and I think a pretty beautiful one. Okay, let's talk about the first dive watch in the collection, which is an Oris, an Oris Aquis Green. And Oris really does a great job with these dive watches. It's an Aquis date, the date at six o'clock. Nowadays, Oris is using um, Zelita SW200 movements, which is fine to me. They really do regulate the well. Well, I did own the Oris Aquis Steghorn and it was really good regulated and I think they did do also with this one a great job. I do have a couple of friends who do have an Oris watch in their collection or an Oris Aquis in their collection. Really unique design, its own design language um, Oris does use. It's classic from, on its own from my point of view, integrated bracelet. Really beautiful looking watch. I like the hint of green. I'm a fan of um, like different colors in the collection. I prefer myself to have like a black, a blue, a green, a white, a champagne color dial to have something changing there on the first glance and I think this green does fit into the rest of the collection and Oris does do a great job with these sunburst dials. I remember this from my stack on as well. It's really a beautiful made, a rich sunburst and a great color so it the green version went from dark green to mid green. It's really well made. Ceramic bezel overall, I think a great addition to his current collection and definitely a beautiful piece. So let's talk about his next two watches, starting with uh, Rado. And Rado is a pioneer because nowadays you do hear about uh, Hublot, about Omega, about Tudor, which all come out with ceramic cases. Rado did this first and not just the cases, but as well the bracelets. So with Rado you could get a mechanical watch or quartz watch with a ceramic bracelet, with a ceramic case, scratch resistance, with a sapphire crystal. Well, that's innovation, isn't it? And from this point of view, I sort of do like the Rado there in the collection. But considering that Michael would like to go more the mechanical way or the way of mechanic watches and leave the quartz behind, it doesn't fit too well. Um, from the distance, it seems to look like a black bracelet overall. So, I do appreciate what Rado did, and Rado do has some stunning pieces in their collection, talking about the Captain Cook, but this Rado isn't just my cup of tea, and I think I would swap it for something else. The second watch is a Junghans, a Junghans Solar Quartz piece with date, 
Jungans does has a story of um, of um, quartz watches as well, precision quartz watches with um, this connection and yes, it's okay piece, but again, I'm more the fan of mechanic watches. Michael would like to go or to become more the collector of mechanical watches. It could be his dress watch and the current collection, but when I do think about Junghans, I do have typically the Max Bill in my mind, the Max Bill dress watch, the original one, or the Max Bill chronoscope, the chronograph with a beautiful white dial would fit perfectly here. So I don't see this particular Jung Hans in his overall collection. Let's talk about Rolex. Rolex Submariner 116610. And this is a staple of each collection, to be honest. It's classical Submariner, ceramic bezel, glide lock bracelet, uh, glide lock clasp, of course. Date at three o'clock. Magnification grass over the date function, of course. 300 meters of water resistance. It's a classical driver. You need a classic dive watch in your collection or a classic chronograph in your collection. Anyways, side by side with the Davosa, which should be replaced according to Michael with the GMT Master. This would be, from my point of view, too similar. And as he does have already a dive watch in his collection, which is the Oris Aquis in green, I personally if I would receive or would purchase one day the GMT Master. On that day, I would sell the Davosa, I would sell the Submariner and would get the day just. But let's discuss this later on. Overall, the Submariner is a great watch, it's a classic, it's a Rolex classic, um, but also classic a lot of collectors do have for a reason. Still, side by side with the GMT Master, I would not take it. But let's check this out afterwards when we review his final collection and make the conclusion out of it. Let's talk about his last watch, which is a Casio Edifice. It's on the one hand a cool watch because you can connect it with your smartphone. You don't have the Casio app there where you can get the informations, where you can change the date and so on. So this does has definitely this James Bond-ish. <laughs> Um, charm to it. Still, I, I, I'm a mechanic guy. I do like mechanical watches and to be honest, Michael is on the way to swap out all his um, quartz watches to mechanical ones. And I don't see this in the collection. From my point of view, this doesn't fit at all in the overall collection. Um, I'm not just not a big Casio Edifice fan. If we do talk G-Shock, classic G-Shock, one of the first Okay, I'm in. This is a classic you should have in your collection, even if you are a mechanical guy, because you need sometimes a quartz piece. And then the G-Shock is definitely a cool watch. This one, it's just not my cup of tea, not the watch I would use or prefer or even consider buying. And with his plan to change or to swap all watches to mechanical ones, just doesn't fit in the collection. Sorry for that, Michael, but yeah, it is how it is. <laughs> Okay guys, what is the conclusion of this watch collection? Let's summarize it. Oris Aquas Date in green, check. Keeper. The Seiko Vintage Chronograph, check. You need to have a vintage Seiko in your collection. It's a great, great staple. The Davosa with the GMT function, ticks the boxes at the moment, check. And the Submariner as well. Right now, if I would be on Michael's shoes, I would sell the Casio, I would sell the Junghans and the Rado. And from my point of view, I would like to add a dress watch. So we do have the chronograph, which is a vintage Seiko, we do have the dive watch, we do have the GMT fu function, and we do have the Submariner, which should stay right now. I would look for like a Junghans Max Bill, a Junghans, uh, Junghans Max Bill chronoscope, because I think this would add some classic design, but not too much. And I think it would fit great side by side with the Oris, um, with the Davosa and with the Submariner. Or maybe a Nomos, a Nomos Club Compass, which is also rough, tough. You can use it, it's got a decent water resistance. Or you go even for the new Nomos Sport models, which have 
water resistance up to 300 meters in unique design, sporty but still dressy. I think this could be a great direction and if you're going to get finally a GMT Master then I would use the GMT Master. You have already a diver, sell the Submariner, purchase an Oyster Perpetual or a Datejust, maybe a Skydweller. This could be also a nice idea and you're done. You said you have the perfect collection from my point of view. But guys, what I'm interested in now is your opinion. What do you think about my thoughts? <laughs> what do you think about my thoughts? But yeah, what is your opinion about the collection? What would you change right now? Do you think my recommendations are okay or would you recommend something else? I'm eager to learn about this in the comment section below. So guys, right there, what are your thoughts about this collection? I wish all of you now a very happy weekend, a good start into the new week. Look forward to see you in the next one. Say goodbye and auf Wiedersehen. Euer Konstantin. Bye guys. Ciao.